My next guest has got a huge fight coming up here against Terrence McKinney, UFC Fight Night, July 15th. It is Nazim Sadikov. Back here on the program. Nazim, how are you, man? Great to be back, man. Thank you. Likewise, awesome fight. Just tell me how amped you were to get Terrence McKinney as an opponent because there's no way this fight's going to be boring. Yeah, this is an exciting fight. Uh, the fans win on this one because the exchanges, the scrambles, uh, everything about this fight is going to be exciting. It's two finishers. Uh, one guy is uh, 13 finishes, uh, 13 wins, 13 finishes. The other guy, eight wins, seven finishes. And any exchange, any any uh, any uh, scramble, any exchange that's going to occur in this fight is going to be exciting. So I'm definitely excited for this one. I've been working my ass off. This camp has been great. Uh, we're two weeks out, two weeks away, so I'm excited to say the least. I know it's like a totally different fight, but a little bit of revenge here for Matt Frivola, who I know fought uh, Terrence as well, looking to right that wrong there. Yeah, there's definitely like uh, there's definitely that backstory there. Uh, I don't have anything like personal against McKinney. It's just another name at the end of the day. I'm looking to be impressive. I'm looking to open a lot of eyes to who I am on that day, regardless of the backstory. But it's going to feel good to get a victory, get this one back for the team, and bring this one back for Frivola. Yeah, it'll be great, man. Uh, did you want to fight uh, sooner than this, or was this kind of the right amount of time off? Uh, I mean, I did, but only maybe by a month Um we, we were just thinking and talking about uh, June, uh, but I did have a little, you know, a few bumps and bruises that I wanted to take care of. I spent the, my entire March, the entire month of March in Vegas uh, at the PI, just recovering and stuff, getting on, uh, getting a couple of procedures and stuff. So I feel good, you know, from April uh, onward, I've been pretty much preparing for the summer. And then I got the date uh, in about May. I think it was end of April or, or nice. May date so everything everything's lined up perfectly and we're right on schedule how did you As like be- likes to say yes no no he does i was sorry to interrupt you there I, did, how did you like training in vegas i know obviously you're there for the pi but i know even aljo does some training out there as well is that something you could see yourself doing maybe going there to do some training and recovery and all that well, first of all, it was great to see. Uh, I, w- I-, I don't want to lie and say I-, I helped Aljo or anything like that, but it was just good to see what he does. He was preparing for Henry Cejudo. Oh, nice. Which, okay. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, which was the biggest fight, and it's just good to just be in the room with the guy and see what he's doing. Like I said, I was training, but I was also dealing with uh, with like a few procedures and all that kind of stuff, some PT, some uh, physical therapy at the PI. So I didn't get to see his whole camp, but just to be in the room with the guy and see – uh, what he's doing to prepare for the highest caliber possible fight was definitely a motivational and definitely what I needed going heading into my camp, you know? Yeah, no, absolutely, man. And let's talk about uh, McKinney, 13 and five record. He's a highlight machine. Stylistically, how are you looking at this one? Uh, stylistically, this plays into my favor because he, uh, he is uh, a dangerous fighter on paper, but I feel my style drowns his. Uh, I feel he will come with a certain strategy, but I feel... Uh, with every minute, every 30 seconds, every minute of this fight, uh, I feel I'm going to strip him away from his strategy and implement mine. And in the end, it's going to be me looking for the finish. It's going to be me walking him down. It's going to be me uh, hunting for the kill. And you've never been knocked out. Like, does that play into this at all? Do you think like, you know, the durability factor, like you're a guy that does not, I mean, you've won a lot of fights, obviously you only had the one loss and it was a submission loss. I think you're pro fight. Um, but do you think that plays into this? Cause he's used to going out there and kind of being the highlight reel and the calling it a night, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't look at – I'm always prepared for war. That's just yeah. my mindset for every, all, all these fights. If it's going to be a three-round tight-fit fight and he's going to be in there and we're going to exchange and we're going to drop each other and get up and keep coming, that's just what it's going to be. Uh, it doesn't matter what your uh, 13 or 8 or whatever streak anybody has coming. We're competing at the highest level. He's not – he's preparing – in the best he's probably in the best shape he's ever been in i'm mm-hmm. expecting him to be in the best shape the best iq the smartest he's ever been and that's how i'm going to be so regardless of whether he's a highlight machine or not uh he has another highlight machine in front of him and we're going to see who's going to make a highlight reel of who on july 15th so i beg to i i i think uh i think my style however is it, it drowns his style no, I agree. And uh, training camp, uh, who you mentioned, some of your training partners there, uh, who have been some of the main guys for this camp helping you get ready? Uh, well, 
obviously this is a south pole look i haven't been working with uh frivola and uh dennis has uh, helped me we, we've moved around a couple of times he knows how to work both stances armando who's the ring of combat uh, armando Gijeta, if i'm not if i'm pronouncing pronouncing his albania last name correctly he's the ring of combat champion he's also on a streak he's looking to get on contenders uh for this upcoming season if he can uh but he's also so you know he's also that caliber uh it was a good lefty look a uh, bunch of uh, grappling, a bunch of grappling and wrestling with uh, a couple of Hofstra guys. Uh, I know McKinney is going to try to bring some wrestling uh, uh, scrambles to this fight. I'm going to be prepared for that. A uh, bunch of guys at Sarah BJJ as always. All my law guys, Coach Ray Longo. A uh, bunch of guys in Vanguard. This was my first camp working with uh, uh, Jason Round. Uh, they have their own academy at uh, Vanguard now. So I'm just mixing it in with this New York crew. I like to do my last seven, eight weeks out here in New York. I like to travel. I like to train. And, you know, I was in Miami for a week or, or eight days uh, during my birthday week. Uh, I was training over there a little bit in Kilcliff. Uh, came back and my seven, my final seven weeks have been just like that here in New York, just uh, mixing in with all the top guys, all the all the greatest talent we have here on the East Coast. Uh, your corner, who will be making the trip with you? Uh, it will probably be the same. All my hitmen, the same guys. It's probably going to be uh, Coach Eric Heyer, Coach Ray Longo, and Matt and or uh, Funkmaster, depending on his availability. I know he's in camp. Uh, we don't want to bother him too much either so it's it'll probably be uh steamroller it'll probably be coach ray and coach higher there you go and how's this one playing out on july 15th how do you see this one going down i'll finish it can it can it, i just know that i'm going to be the one coming forward picking shots it might even be a takedown i might even be ground and pounding into hunting for a submission uh force him to turn his back or force him uh, into making a mistake and I just see it as a finish. I'm confident in my skills. I'm confident in my heart. I'm confident in everything that's that's brought me here uh, to this moment, to this stage. So uh, July 15th, like I said, the fans win first, and then one of us is going to win. God willing, it'll be me. God willing, I'll come out on top with a finish and a 50K bonus. Now I just got some rapid-fire questions. So whatever comes first to your mind when I when I say this question, just, just say whatever comes to mind. There's no wrong answers here. Who's the best striker in the UFC? <sighs> Just because uh, we just talked about it, I'm going to go with Taporia, but I would put him in more of a boxing category. But let's let's say that you, since you said first thing that comes to mind, I'll, I'll put him up there. Best grappler in the UFC? Aljamie Sterling. Uh, funniest fighter in the UFC? Conor McGregor. Uh, if you could have uh, dinner with any fighter, who would it be? Habib. Okay. Uh, who would you want by your side in a street fight? Uh, Alex Pereira. Oh, who has the highest fight IQ? GSP. And what is a dream fight you want to see? Not you personally, but what's a fight that you want to see? Not Elon Musk versus Zuckerberg. But uh, uh, let's say I would love to see Tapuria versus uh, Holloway. That's 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 my initial dream matchup right now. I love it. They're all in Tapuria. No, no, I, I agree. You looked outstanding uh, last week. And uh, back to you. Um, do you want to get one more fight in this year? Is that kind of the plan? Or you kind of just see how this goes and reassess? I, I always want to like jump and just be in there as active as possible. I, I said four at the beginning of the year. Then I was like a month too late than what I wanted to. I definitely want to get one more in. Um, but let's just see how, how everything goes. You know, I'm ready for war. I'm ready to, to be injured. God, God willing, we both come out of there with no injuries. But I'm ready to be injured. I'm ready to, you know, do whatever it takes to get that victory. So talk after July 15th, you know. July yeah. 15th is the only focus right now. Um, what did you think of Charles Oliveira's win over Benil Darius? And were you expecting that going in? Absolutely not. Outstanding victory. I was not expecting that. Uh, but then again, Charles Oliveira literally beat everybody in the top five. And a rematch with Mahachev makes sense. Outstanding. Can, any, can anyone beat Islam right now, do you think, at 155, excluding yourself? Uh well, I, I'm not the type of guy that's like myself, myself, myself. I yeah, just, yeah, no worries. I, I just I say that anyways just in case, you know. But because. Uh, I, I, I think it's going to be tough. Like, I, th I think anyone to dethrone him right now is going to be really difficult. Yeah, from a, from a fan perspective, uh, I don't see it. I I like Oliveira's chances at a rematch, but it's it's going to be the same story, to be honest. I, if anything, uh, probably a decision this time, but like more so a dominant one. The, the wrestling and the sambo and the top control is going to be too much for Oliveira, I believe.
And before we get out of here, what's downtime looking like right now? Are you getting any Netflix shows or anything interesting like that in between sessions and all that, you know? If you have anything for me, I would love some suggestions because I already watched all the stuff that I, I, w- I consider my favorite shows now. You know, I, I, I've been trying to get into some shows, but I can't. Like, I got suggested Dark Knight because I actually never seen Dark Knight from start to finish. Yeah. I still want to get into it. I don't know. Superhero stuff just isn't my thing, I guess. What about I documentaries? Like- That's mainly what I watch. I watch a lot of that. You know, they have the American Gladiators documentary. Remember that from the 90s? It's pretty interesting. I'll I'll give that a try tonight. Actually, I'm going to boxing sparring in a few. That that that'll be something I'll try tonight. I need yeah. some shows. If you have a few, let I me. I got know. a couple. Maybe I'll think of some more after we hop out this interview. I'll send send you a message on, on Instagram. But I'm I let, that's all I watch on Netflix is documentaries. I can't get into a lot of shows. It's just uh, don't have a lot of time. I got two kids. So documentary, put it on for an hour and a bit. That's good enough for me. You know, I don't have to invest too much time. So understood. There you go. But definitely always have time for you uh, when it comes to interviews, man. I appreciate the time. Uh, UFC Fight Night, July 15th. If there's anyone you want to thank before we get out of here, any sponsors, any social media you want to mention, I'll give you the last word. I just want to thank all my fans that have been supporting all my all my Azerbaijanis and not Azerbaijanis, regardless of who's out there supporting me. Uh, I just have a large uh, fan base, a large following from uh, my homeland. That's why I always kind of se- thank them separately but just everybody I've, I've i have great support i have a great team behind me great management ruby sports entertainment shout out to ruby shout out to ray longo shout out to coach hire shout out to everybody that's been helping me this camp shout out to matt sarah shout out to jason rao just all, all my guys everybody that surrounds me on a daily basis is just amazing I, I i feel the greatest i've ever felt and uh these people i i owe i owe everything to them